The far-right Israeli finance minister, uh, Bezalel Smotrich, has called for Jewish settlements in Gaza this week. So on Monday, on the anniversary of October 7th, he posted on Facebook saying, we must end this war with the IDF in full control of the Gaza Strip over the long run. Uh, in this situation, assuming diplomatic conditions make it possible, it would be possible to renew Jewish settlement in Gaza and ensure a permanent, stable Jewish presence. Uh, obviously, it's important to quickly note that uh, Israel's in a coalition government. He doesn't necessarily speak for the entire government, and I'm not defending other parts of the government, but it is important to know that right now there is an Israeli coalition being held together with a bunch of far-right people saying, we're going to dismantle the government and dismantle this coalition if you don't do exactly everything we say. And that's how we've ended up here. Uh, it's not the first time that he has called for this. Uh, this is nothing new at all. Uh, but what is new is the plan for Smotrich and the IDF to get total control over Gaza. So David Cameron, you know, once famously said, and it's the only time I will quote David Cameron, uh, that Gaza was like an open air prison. But under the plans Smotrich is planning, it seems to be stepping into what could be described as a concentration camp. And I don't use that word uh, lightly at all. Uh, they already restrict all journalists from entering Gaza and anyone leaving. Uh, no organizations can currently enter unless it's for aid purposes, but now they want to stop all aid. Uh, Smotrich has been holding talks with Benjamin Netanyahu to expel all foreign aid organizations out of Gaza and allow the IDF to take over deliveries and distribution of all the aid. This will include a cost of over $5 billion a year to Israel. So as Haaretz, they were reporting on this, they speculate that they believe this is part of a plan to get full control of Gaza and allowed no outside influence to affect the occupied territory in any way. So it would allow them and Smotrich to enact punitive punishments on Palestinians in Gaza, just like he's done in the West Bank, where he has withheld taxes collected by Israel that were generated in the West Bank by Palestinians, effectively starving them of money. He's also used his position to authorize multiple settlements in the West Bank, and he's trying to do exactly the same in Gaza. And just to further demonstrate like the, the general expansionist mindset of many senior Israeli politicians, and even its citizens and the IDF, uh, watch this clip. שימו לב, הטיילת האיראנית. מול אביבים. That was the IDF soldiers planting a flag in South Lebanon. Why? Because many Zionists believe that that land is actually theirs. Uh, when the World Zionist Organization was negotiating with the Western powers years before Israel declared independence, this section of land where they are right now, planting this flag, along with Gaza, the West Bank, Jerusalem, the Sinai Desert, which is Egyptian territory, Transjordan, which is now Jordanian land, and of course, South Lebanon. They wanted it all. And now many people to this day still want that land. Uh, Israel has used this excuse of its right to defend itself since its inception. Then they invade then they occupy, and then they annex. At one point or another, they have attempted to occupy every piece of land that they originally wanted. Now, Curtis, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, you first have to know that Smotrich said that he is uh, he's made it his life's mission to uh, stop a Palestinian state, um, which is, of course, true of many people in Israel. He is a far-right figure, um, I mean, his opinion is, uh, you know, not um, not a minority in Israel. Now, uh, very interesting that you showed that clip of the the Israeli flag in Lebanon, and that's exactly what it is. Israel is a settler colonial project which is trying to expand into a fully operation operational uh, colonial project, and it will not stop. Okay. Now, of course, they use it as the pretense as we're trying to defend ourselves. But of course, we know that's a load of nonsense. But what they're trying to do is take over essentially the entire Middle East. It's going to start with Palestine, then they're going to move into Lebanon, then Yemen, then Syria, and pretty much anywhere. Because that is what colonial powers do. Now, right now, of course, the West is pretty much still backing Israel. But we need to understand that this is going to come up and bite us on the ass eventually. Because... Colonial powers or, or states that want to uh, expand don't stop and then say, okay, this, that's, an, that's it for us now. 
they always want to try and take over essentially the entire world. That's what Britain did in, our, in the height of our colonial power. We didn't say, right, we're going to take a handful of countries and that's it. If we could, we would have occupied and taken over the entire world. That's what they mm. do. So one day, if we don't stop Israel, they're going to come for us too. And they're going to say, well, actually, uh, this is ours now. That is how foreign powers over the course of history work. If you if you um, look back in history and you look at all these big powers, they always shift and they always change. But the number one thing they want to do is take up as much land as possible. Um, there is many reasons why, obviously, economic reasons, uh, power reasons, or even just religious reasons. There's always a different reason behind it, but it's the same thing. And that flag completely symbolizes what Israel is about. Um, also, part of that is, and I alluded to earlier when we were talking about the, the surveillance system, um, because also uh, Smotrich said that we shouldn't have a Palestinian state because uh, a Palestinian state would be an existential threat to Israel. That's very telling. If you think that another people's should have a right to self-determination and their own state is an existential threat to you, that's a you problem. That just says that clearly your whole endeavor, the, the project of Israel, is one that is built on apartheid, genocide, um, and something that needs to be radically transformed because the fact that you think external forces are uh, a threat, simply just having um, a, a right to self-determination. And that speaks to the, the paranoia, I believe, when it comes to surveillance, and that's why they're surveilling on our, on our allies. So it's very interesting. We also need to point out the fact, I know many people know this, but, you know, Smotrich and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu may sound like the most extreme people, but the Zionist project is all one, in the, one of the same. Now, of course, if we were to somehow see the end of Benjamin Netanyahu and had another politician who was probably better at the PR, maybe moderated their language a little bit, that doesn't mean there's progress happening in Israel. The same thing is happening, maybe just a little bit slower. Um, essentially, we have to stop Israel before it expands into all different places across the Middle East. Obviously, that's not really looking like it's going to happen because the only criticisms we're getting from uh, Biden is, uh, you know, I'm really pissed off at Netanyahu in secret, yet he's still aiding and abetting Israel. He's still sending money. We're still selling arms to Israel to do this expansionist project. So we have to stop Israel in its tracks. Um, otherwise, this will grow and grow and grow because colonial power never, ever stops by its own accord. Yeah, part of the reason as well why uh, certain types of colonialism in the past has been so damaging to the world is that when you mix colonialism and religion together, yeah. it's the most destructive force, right? Many people forget that a lot of the uh, endeavors that the British Empire and other European powers uh, went on, they were blessed by the Catholic Church or their religious advisors. I was reading very recently that when the Spanish went to the Americas, they, uh, their religious advisors said to them that these people are a godless people, and therefore they have no land and they have not been given that land by God, so therefore you can take it for your God. Uh, and when we think about that, um, Smotrich is insanely religious. I can't genuinely think of a person in the UK who is, he's, he's more religious than the head, of the, the head of the Church of England. This guy genuinely believes that at any secular point that you can throw at him, the idea of self-determination, it does not matter because he is part of God's army. Mm. Uh, and that's a quote from him as well. He's part of uh, the army of God. He's part of um, a religious movement which is empowered by their scriptures. And that cannot be argued with. It has to be defeated. And that's the only way we can do it. Yeah, you can't negotiate with these people, which is funny because that's essentially the West position is, look, I don't think that there are many people in our government, there are many people in the uh, US government who are not big fans of Netanyahu. I know that it's correct to point out that we are complicit in the uh, war crimes of Israel. That is absolutely true, but it doesn't mean that they particularly like Netanyahu. They think they can convince him and persuade him to stop doing less war crimes, which is not going to happen because, as I said, the man is almost irrelevant. It's the state itself. If a state is built on apartheid, built on blood, built on genocide, that is always going to exist that way, no matter who is in power in Israel. That's why it needs to be completely radically transformed to a secular nation. Whatever that looks like, I don't know. And that's a conversation many people are having. What is the future 
um, of the Middle East, of the region? Is it a one-state solution with um, Israelis and Palestinians living in there with equal rights? Is it a two-state solution? I mean, I feel like as the days go on, two-state solution feels less and less untenable. But regardless, it needs to be radically transformed brick by brick because it's not going to happen by simply, oh, look, guys, I know you're built on 75 years of blood of apartheid, but do you think you can maybe like change now? It's not going to happen. It's never worked that way before. Um, and it certainly won't happen again this way. It needs to be stopped. Yeah. And as uh, the same article from Haaretz points out, is that they believe that Ben Gavir and Smotrich are keeping this war going. And if they, yeah, uh, if there is a cease, if there is a ceasefire deal, they will dissolve the government uh, and collapse it. And obviously, as we know, Benjamin Netanyahu is on trial, and he's tried to influence the uh, legislature to influence the judiciary, which could affect his trial in his benefit, of course. Um, so he needs to stay in power. So this war is continuing because Ben Gavir, Smotrich, they want more land. Uh, they don't care about the hostages. They uh, don't care how many people have to die for this because they are religious extremists. But um, I also want to say, sorry, I, I cut you off there. No, go ahead. I was going to say that in a way, imperialism is its own kind of religion. Like religion absolutely plays a role, as you just said. Um, imagine being a, an imperialist and a religious, uh, you know, a conservative religious person. It's a recipe for disaster. But imperialism is kind of its own religion because you don't have to be ultra religious in order to support expansionist policies. Um, mm -hmm. So it feels like imperialism in of itself is a religion. It must be done. Um, and that, again, once that, that needs to be completely broken down across the entire world. Um, it's also worth noting that before, you know, in, in early, the, the early Zionist project before the state of Israel was created, you know, that area, uh, Ottoman Palestine, as it, as it once was called, because it was under the Ottoman Empire, mm -hmm. that wasn't the only place they were looking at. They were looking at many other places. They yeah. were looking at South Africa, for example. And you just think that religion does play a big role here, but I think it's the imperialist colonial um, mindset was the biggest thing because they were looking at other areas. They were looking at settling in South Africa and many other places. Now, if it was purely down to religion, again, I'm not downplaying the aspect there, but if it was purely down to that, that then it would be just in, you no, know, it'd have to be in Palestine and mm -hmm. that's it. No, they were willing to uh, occupy and settle in any place. Obviously, it ended up, ended up being there. Um, but that is just the colonial mindset once again. Support independent media. Support social justice that's there on social media. Thank you. Turn left.